Namaskar. Welcome to the Charvaka podcast, guys. I'm really excited about uh, this chat today. I cannot tell you how long I've waited to chat with this guest. I, I actually came across his work, I think about um, seven or eight years ago, when I remember watching a program on NDTV. And I was so happy to find out that, you know, there's something like this happening in the country. And, and I'll give you my reasons. So my Nanaji, my grandfather, was in the armed forces. And uh, my Nanaji had come across, met with an accident where uh, he lost a finger. And then he was obviously shifted into the civilian ranks within the armed forces. But you know, growing up in a family who has some member in the armed forces, you do hear stories about the armed forces. And my Nanaji used to talk about uh, disability and the problems soldiers face and different members in the armed forces face over the period of uh, years. And when I came across uh, Nadeep Singh Ji. I was so excited as, you know, here's someone who's trying to do something about this serious issue. And then I don't know why I never contacted him, but I guess, you know, it's just about, uh, you know, I don't know, and finally I did get hold of him via Twitter of all the places because I hardly use Twitter. I did not even know he was on Twitter. That's how weird it is. But I'm so happy that today I've finally gotten him on the podcast. So, Navdeep Ji, thanks a lot for coming on the podcast. Thank you, Kushal. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. So, nice to be here. Uh, so, let's start with, uh, you know, in case somebody is living under the rock and they don't know <laughs> about who you are. So, why don't you start by saying a little bit about yourself, your background and how you got into this uh, whole subject per se. See, I'm uh, I'm a lawyer uh, in the Punjab and Haryana High Court, and I also practice in the Armed Forces Tribunal. In fact, I was the first uh, founder president of the Chandigarh bench of the Armed Forces Tribunal. And uh, like you, I'm also from a Fauji family, from from a military family, and uh, I've myself uh, served in the infantry in the Territorial Army, and uh, I was a Territorial Army volunteer, which probably many would be knowing as a uh, citizens uh, part-time voluntary force wherein you wear uniform for a few days in a year and in case of an emergency you bear arms for the nation so i spent uh, more than a decade uh, in, in in the in the territorial army and uh, all, of course i was always a practicing lawyer and i've served in operational areas also and uh, the um, you know interest in these issues uh, not just related to disabled soldiers but uh, also, you know, issues related to, to the welfare of military families, to the welfare of military widows, other uh, rights and priv privileges of the armed forces com community. All these uh, uh, were my areas of interest, uh, you know, having grown up in a, in a uh, military uh, kind of a back, backdrop and a military community. Uh, but it configured well with my profession. Because, uh, as you know, in, uh, as lawyers, we can directly uh, help out such issues and such cases uh, by directly dealing with the society, by helping them out uh, by through representations, through engaging with the civil society, through engaging with the establishment, the military establishment, the civil establishment, the political executive, and of course, in, in courts. So that's how, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the two aspects uh, met my my uh, military background and my interest in these issues and my profession that is my primary profession that is law so that is how i mean we reached where where we are right now and uh, i'm i've also you know worked uh, in the area of judicial independence of uh, tribunals in india and many other public interest issues uh, reform of military justice not just in india but also all all over the globe um, in fact, I've been associated with, with global military justice reform. And since most of the democracies face the same kind of problems, um, not just in veteran welfare, but, but also in other administrative issues and, and issues related to military law. So so that's, that's how it is. Okay, now uh, I want to start by asking you a question. My first question would be, obviously, we are going to focus on your fourth book, which is Maimed by the System. Mm -hmm. Now... Why did you, you know, I mean, obviously, I, it's it may sound like a stupid question that why did you write the book, but it's very important to me. And I'll tell you why. Because obviously, you know, you keep coming on the news channels and stuff like that. But 
uh, basically what I was when I, when I was going through excerpts and I was trying to understand uh, your book, it was basically it's a collection of stories of, and the struggles that people in the armed forces have faced when it comes to you know various issues. So what what, what basically was your mindset? Why did you think that you know nahi abhi ye kitab likhni padegi? I have to write a book about this and and why in a narrative format like why did you choose a format that i'm just going to share stories i mean there are different ways of writing a book so why, you had specific something specific in mind that you know i'm going to go do it, writing this book in this particular way a uh, very very uh, interesting question and uh, very pertinent also because um, paradoxically i wrote the book so that i don't have to write a similar book again and nobody else has to write such a book again uh why in this format because these are real life stories these are actual real stories of uh, uh, soldiers disabled soldiers uh, widows and their families who had to fight for their rights uh, rights which should have legally and in a mature democratic society flown towards them automatically but still uh, you know they had to face impediments they had to fight it out and ultimately they reclaimed their their rights so uh being real life stories uh people can relate to them because these are real people who were affected and who who uh, claimed their rights mostly through through legal ways through through judicial intervention and uh it is also it also uh is a lesson for the establishment for for various agencies dealing with this, these issues uh including the military establishment the civil establishment the defense accounts department the uh bureaucracy in the ministry of defense and even for fellow lawyers and judges uh it's 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 an it's a kind of an eye opener for them that look these are the problems that people face some of those problems are hyper technical in in nature in the sense that the the problems do not actually exist but are created by fellow humans um due to a literal interpretation of rules when the rules uh, mind you are very liberal in india uh, welfare related rules or pensionary benefits uh the interpretation becomes literal and and hyper technical and sometimes um, it overrides the practical realities of life so there are many such stories um for example there's a story of uh, a lady called dakshina from himachal pradesh uh you know her her uh, husband was uh, in the infantry and posted on the china border roughly speaking uh, it's it's a it's an area called the sugar sector in himachal pradesh and uh, very treacherous area and snows there almost you know almost 12 months you have snow there and uh, rocky area very tough very tough to to even survive there and he was deployed there and uh, he was on guard duty and he took a break uh, uh, to answer the nature's call and the area was such that he slipped down and his his head hit uh, a stone and he died now the compensation which is granted to people who die uh, while on duty was refused to her saying that generally speaking he was on duty but at the time when he died he was answering the nature's call so this was an objection taken by certain people so i mean uh, even to a common person to a lay person it sounds ridiculous right but uh, despite the fact that she kept on representing to the army to the civil establishment nothing moved and ultimately it was through judicial intervention that she got her dues so i wanted to chronicle such stories so that these uh, you know uh, these act as a guiding light for the future that let's not do this to our people we it is something uh, which legally belongs to them it is not that the government is doing them a favor it is not that as a lawyer i'm doing them a favor it is not that the court is doing them a favor this these are their legal benefits and even for them for for these benefits that they have to fight it out and a long uh the area was treacherous and the journey for the wife was even more treacherous so uh this is just an example there there are so many other other i mean in the book there are about 20 21 stories but in real life we've dealt with hundreds and thousands of such cases that uh, you feel you feel pained at times and uh, uh people don't understand uh, the the human element behind uh, these issues 
you know, this i mean sometimes i mean i've just heard this story and even i'm numb even listening to it that you, your mind gets get, gets into a state of shock that you know something like this can even happen to someone but okay let's try to structure this now so here is the uh, i would request you to first explain that what are the possible problems that soldiers or armed forces people who members who of the armed forces can possibly face which you are dealing with so let us start with these are the problems these are the possible scenarios we can use uh, three four more examples like you just use this example step 2 would be what are the possible hurdles they face okay we have identified the problems then we talk about the hurdle so one hurdle could be bureaucratic behavior now could it be bureaucratic behavior within the armed forces or within the civilian government so what are the different kinds of problems the hurdles they face and then what are the possible solutions and then the last step we would go for is what are the roadblocks that you are facing when we try to apply those solutions so so can you explain the first step now see the first step as i said that uh, uh, in in many of these issues in fact in about 70 80% of these issues the rules and the law both of the these favor the applicants or or uh, the claimants or the affected parties so it is just uh, the human intervention which is negative in in character like i gave you this example you'll be surprised to find that there was uh, one um, uh, very brave captain called captain binder who died saving so many people in the upahar tragedy in 1997 right the upahar th theater the cinema tragedy so many people he saved and uh, when benefits uh, initially uh, the death his death was declared as attributable to military service because of course a soldier is supposed to be on duty 24 hours a day and in case uh, something like this happens he or she is bound to rise to the occasion to help uh, you know citizens in need so uh, benefits were refused to his family saying that he had just gone to watch a movie he was not on duty you know stuff like that so uh, it is uh, i mean he he uh, he is there he dies in 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 those flames and uh, while saving the life of uh, the lives of several citizens and going beyond the charter of his duties and somebody says no no he had just gone to watch a movie and not he was not on duty and hence benefits re refused to the family so again uh, it is not the rules which which uh, can be blamed uh, the rules are liberal it is the negative human intervention or the literal interpretation which is to be blamed and i find this in many many cases uh, you know in in law and even um, in all mature democracies in constitutional law in service jurisprudence it's always said that if there is a beneficial or a beneficent provision you have to interpret it in a beneficial manner in the sense if you even if you err you err towards the end of a benefit uh, to a claimant or to an affected party in a welfare state but that empathy is lacking and uh, i'll be very honest with you that empathy is not only lacking in netas and babus as all people say or, or veterans tend to say it is also lacking within the military setup and that is why i say that it is not uh, you know we talk of camaraderie camaraderie is not just going into the battle together uh, there is no dearth of bravery in the forces there is no dearth of camaraderie in the forces as far as that aspect is concerned camaraderie i always say on even on twitter i have said this camaraderie does not even does not just mean attending parties or reunions together or just you know going to attend uh, the wedding of the daughter or, or or a son of a fellow soldier camaraderie is feeling uh, with the other person you know uh, inculcating uh, a feeling of empathy and and trying to help uh, your your comrades in in arms and their families in such issues in policy matters in, in interpretation of policy so uh, i find uh, that generally uh, there is this approach that we cannot see the other person happy or we tend to uh, invent impediments because in india i find that it's uh, kind of an ego boost to people the number of impediments you can you can uh, pose in public life it tends to boost your ego that you you tend to feel powerful that dekha maine ye ye rok liya and ye mere aage piche aake request karega and stuff like that 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 
you you tend to feel that oh i'm i'm you know such powers i have in my hands that i can stop benefits or i can release benefits so that kind of attitude has to go uh we need a uh, we need a crash course in empathy i i feel not just uh, again in the bureaucracy but also within the military community and and as human beings it's not just a matter of wearing uniform or not wearing uniform as human beings we need to be more sensitive in even in the general society we need to feel the pain of others um and uh, as far as policies are concerned uh, the existing policies as i said for especially for disabled soldiers they are they are uh, good enough uh, but uh, even at the policy implementation level what happens is that uh, when the system or when even when the political executive tries to iron out the creases somehow there is so much of resistance from within the establishment and uh, again i find that uh, the the root cause is that uh, certain people within the establishment feel that their their uh, importance would go down uh, and the power centers would be dil diluted so that system also has to go i mean i mean uh, you can't derive power by by harassing people by harassing citizens more so in in case of the armed forces or or uh, members of the um, central armed police forces or even members of other uniform forces that you 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 what should empower you is uh, 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 a feeling of uh, help uh, a feeling of uh, a helping hand that that look i was able to help out this person you should feel empowered by that not by posing impediments in public life so uh, from what i have understood is that this problem that you are talking about is, is a typical desi indian problem where you know i mean i don't know how many have watched the program office office of uh, I forgot the name of the actor. I've completely backed out. Shahid Kapoor's father, I think his name is Pankaj Kapoor. I I, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I remember that. Yeah. So, and, and you know, so what I feel is that this is this is kind of an experience I face when I go to a bureaucrat. You know, just to get my license done and and basically, you know, वो क्या कहते हैं technicalities में घुमा देना किसी को भी and you just roam. मतलब so i have gotten this position to mujhe wo gaddi ka nasha jisko bolte hain in a way what i am trying to uh, trying to gather from what you're saying is there is a sort of gaddi ka nasha which obviously you have said lack of empathy and in a typical feudal culture that we have we, i mean we are a feudal society whether we like to admit it or not we are a very feudal society with we in a very uh, you know very bureaucratic system where person on top of you will try to show you look i am important and in this I mean, if this is what is done to the soldiers, that just breaks my heart. I mean, panda mar gaya. Yeah, in 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 many cases, I'm sure the person must have been disabled, uh, must have lost an arm or a leg, and uh, in in that scenario, if the bureaucrat is going to treat you like that, I mean, it's not just about empathy. I think it's. I think it's pure, unadulterated evil. If you uh, if you pardon my language. I mean, I think it's evil, don't you think? I I agree, Kushal, and and uh, I'll take a cue from this. Just uh, as you said that somebody has lost an arm or a, or a limb or or his leg. Uh, in fact, in such cases, since these are visible disabilities, ज़्यादा बहुत ज़्यादा problem नहीं आती. मेरा concern बहुत ज़्यादा है invisible disabilities से. जो मैं system को भी सुधारने की कोशिश करता हूँ, and I keep telling them that. you know you talk of disabilities in the line of duties uh, in the line of duty and losing your limb uh, and care for them that care is required but usme uh, you don't uh, find many problems in that because that is something visible if somebody loses an arm in a uh, uh, war or or in an operational area or or a leg or there's a mine blast uh, you know what has happened and and it is uh, right there in front of you in black and white and you tend to release the benefits in that sense but what i am more bothered about is the invisible disabilities due to the stress and strain of service and i have been repeating this uh, many times that we tend to ignore this aspect uh, of uh, the massive stress and strain of service called caused in a military which is recognized by all militaries in the world also recognized under the rules by our military but practically those benefits are uh, very tough to attain by by our, by our soldiers now why i say so 
that there's there's this myth and this urban legend even within the army that oh isko to heart disease hua hai ya heart attack hua hai ya hypertension ho gayi ya depression ho gaya the civilian ko bhi ho jata hai why should he be granted disability pension or disability benefits and how is it related to service now i give give these examples in many of my interviews in many of my uh, opinion pieces that it is not so simplistic uh you cannot compare a regular civilian on the street with a woman or man in uniform why i'll tell you firstly people in uniform even in the central armed police forces and to an extent even in the state police they lead a very highly unsettled life and the lever lead a regimented life mostly in barracks and away from the families right so firstly there is lack of accommodation to i mean it's it's a basic thing which everybody knows this for jawans the uh, the lack of accommodation is too acute for officers also to an extent and just the other day i, I was giving this example to to, to the uh, current raksha mantri that even for senior officers who are posted in a peace area in a regular city in city life in a posting of 2 to 2 and a half years we have to change your accommodation twice or thrice all thrice uh, is is uh, very common first you shift in an um, uh, temporary accommodation or in a mess and then you in an officers mess then you go to a to an accommodation which is lesser than your entitlement and then finally you are granted your your entitled accommodation so it is so unsettled even within a posting even within a peace posting ki aap kahin jaate ho you get posted to to delhi or chandigarh or any 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 place uh, in india and you have to shift twice or thrice that makes it so unsettled right and then you have to do this in every posting and in the next posting the family will not be with you and for jawans you imagine they are mostly staying in in uh, barracks in a military unit uh where they don't have their families with them they are uh, staying with uh, fellow soldiers um in 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 an open barrack where they share common uh, washroom and and common facilities so um, uh, so in the first stage itself the life is very unsettled it is highly regimented it is not a commune living within a community with all freedoms right and freedoms reminds me again uh, another example which i give to everyone that life is so highly regulated that even going to the washroom is regulated so for example a jawan who uh, gets up in the morning his his timings are regulated at 5:30 you'll you'll use the washroom at such time to such time you'll uh, uh, go and have a bath itne time se itne time you'll have your tea then th- there is breakfast then there is parade then these are the official duties then again rest time then again you have to be back for games period and stuff like that so it is so highly regulated that you cannot enjoy your regular freedoms so again this example which i give to everyone that even to do anything to go to the market i i tell this to, uh, this to everyone that you have to fill up 10 forms you have to sign in the sentry register uh, in your unit then you have to be back at the time of the roll call so aisa nahi hai ki jaise main aur aap bahar nikle tehlne ke liye chale gaye kahin par bhi chale gaye take a walk out and and you know enjoy life go to the market have a cup of coffee in a cafe and then be back in whatever time you want it's not like that for a soldier even for officers it's not not like that you have to have a fixed routine and then there's so much of work even at home i won't say that civil servants do, do, don't have work they also have work but in the army it gets accentuated because most of the most of your uh, career your family is not with you so uh, any problem back home uh, you know education of children children not being able to uh, get a domicile certificate since they are essentially stateless um, admissions um, any property dispute any a little bit of uh, dispute at home or any problem any domestic issue that you're facing when you're away from the family you just not tend to it anybody getting unwell or falling sick your your son or your daughter falling sick or your wife falling sick or your parents falling sick back at home uh, you cannot be there you know due to exigencies of service and 10 months in a year you cannot be with your family so that tends to those bottled up bottled up emotions and and all these problems back home these tend to aggravate your existing disabilities even if it's a constitutional problem like hypertension or 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 heart disease 
all those things will be affected by stress and strain of military life these issues will get aggravated so just to say that ye civil mein bhi ho jati hai fauj mein kya what's the big deal about it that is absolutely incorrect so i i have always focused on these uh, on these uh, invisible disabilities people don't understand this you know um, there are so, let's say i'll i'll take a stray example uh, cataract for example now uh, there are Uh, certain trades of the army where you are standing on, on guard duties and uh, on the perimeter for example we have a service called the defense uh, security corps where they are mostly guarding airfields and uh, they get a host of eye problems and people say are ye to civil mein bhi ho jata hai isme kya hai not realizing the intrinsic link it has with with military service diabetes uh, i mean diabetes is also affected by the diet which is given to you and and in certain areas there is a fixed diet now for example if you're in a field area or let's say siachen you cannot get a wholesome diet right so unless the problem is uh, due to your dietary indiscretion uh, all these other issues are intrinsically linked with military service uh, there there are so many uh, you know cases of uh, depression or psychiatric disabilities all these issues are blamed sometimes on domestic reasons but why domestic reasons because you are you are unable to cope up with your domestic commitments right again it has a link with military service why because you are in military service you are away from your family you are unable to cope up with your military with your domestic commitments that aggravates your disability so just to broad brush it by saying oh domestic reasons it's not uh, medical science or these issues these are not uh, mathematical 2 plus 2 is not equal to 4 i mean uh, one person because of stress may uh, you know get loose motions or or ibm uh, 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 the other person may get constipated may get constipation the same kind of stressor can result in a different manifestation or or in a different result so all these issues need need to be taken care of and the organization also should end uh, you know putting the blame on domestic reasons or saying that it is neither attributable to service nor aggravated by service unless there's a direct link for example uh, if a person uh, gets a heart disease uh, due to stress and strain or in 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 a in a normal uh, uh, regular military uh, uh, setup if he gets uh, a heart disease you the rules say that you have to presume that it has a connection with military service however if there is a evidence that uh, his heart disease is because of excessive smoking for for example then of course you say that no it is not linked with service but you can't say that he uh, got a heart attack but we will not link it with military service because he was in a peace area uh, he was not in a field area that's what people do that's what even military doctors do uh, because of uh, some mathematical guidelines that they have that he's in a peace area hence uh, he's not le- leading a stressful life that is simply not correct uh, a duty in a peace area with all those military exercises and all those additional peace time duties and in case of officers also there are some such heavy appointments and and uh, such you know uh, uh, appointments is such a heavy workload that it it is bound to cause stress and strain you can't just say that these in a peace area so don't give him benefits but in a field area you must give benefits but there may be uh, appointments in a field area which would be much lighter so this mathematical thing has to end and and the rules have to be followed the rules say that there is no distinction between peace area field area the rules say that every disability regular kind of disability has a link with military service those rules have to be res- respected and this negative human intervention has to stop so what i have understood is it seems i mean i'm actually shocked that you're mentioning these things i mean i'm i'm actually uh, you must have seen my expression every time you mention these things i'm like what this happens because uh, i'll i'll give you a very weird example i recently read a book it has nothing to do with disability or anything but it was about a guy called sebastian younger he wrote a book called tribe and basically what he tried to show in that is how we look for a sense of community and in that there was an excerpt where american soldiers how they suffer from major ptsd yeah yeah absolutely especially soldiers who go on missions right say let's say they go to a mission in iraq they go to a mission uh, in afghanistan or stuff, stuff like that or even you know in peace areas like nato troops right you know you are in a nato nation you're not in a state of panic or anything nobody is going to attack the americans living in germany or japan or anywhere that anywhere like that but 
what he was trying to mention is the amount of PTSD the soldiers suffer because of the erratic lifestyles that they have and how it affects their health and how when they leave their military service and we'll, we'll look at that factor later on but when they come back in the amount of mental disabilities they have and and I'm shocked that I mean I thought this must be a no-brainer in in a in a country like India, which is I think we are educated enough. We we understand mental disabilities, especially in a country as India, which is in such a hostile neighborhood. I mean, you might not have a war with Pakistan for 15 years, let's say, but every week there is some cross-border skirmish. Every time in India, I mean, we have Mao terror in India, we have left-wing terror internally in India. And the armed forces and, you know, even the paramilitary forces for that matter, all of these forces combined, even the police force. I mean, I was, re I remember reading a report about suicide rates amongst Absolutely. the policemen in India are super Absolutely. high. I mean, duh, it's a no brainer. It's obvious that it's these guys are under no tremendous stress. You, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and that's what the kind of reaction that you had. I would like the establishment also to have that reaction because we cannot just brush these aside by saying these are domestic problems or the army has nothing to do with it. There is a direct link with military service uh, of these disabilities with military service and we have to own up. We have to own up that there is uh, a sense of, uh, you know, a deterioration of, of uh, mental and physical health of soldiers and troops. We have to own up that in certain cases, our troops are dying earlier than civilian employees. Why is that happening? We have to own up that we are responsible. We have to put their mind at ease. The women and men in uniform, the uh, uh, central armed police forces, even the policemen. It is it is our duty to do that. We can't just brush them aside and then they say we have nothing to do with you because if we admit that we have something to do with you, we'll have to release benefits to your family or to you. Disability benefits or, or death related benefits, right? So uh, and and. Uh, uh, I, the problem is not of finances. India is not a poor country in, in this sense. Uh, people think that the problem is of the finances. It is not a problem of finances in actual terms. It is only that some people feel that they're doing a service to the society by saving this amount or by saving these finances. However, I always say that instead of saving pennies, you should be more concerned about the de deteriorating health. You be more bothered about giving them care, giving them protection, giving them disability benefits, rather than saving money. The human element is more important than, than this financial, uh, the pseudo financial element. And I was I was glad, in, I was very glad to hear this from the Raksha Mantri uh, recently, that uh, and to be very fair, even from uh, uh, Mr. Antony, but uh, and then uh, Mr. Monohar Parikar, and then very, uh, in a very uh, uh, strong manner by uh, Mrs. Nirmala Sitaraman just a few days back. Uh, she told me, uh, we, we met her in the parliament, that uh, money is not a problem for, for our soldiers. We stand behind our soldiers. It is very heartening to hear that. But the problem is that, again, the matter does not end with the political executive. The political executive is always very sensitized and sensitive, irrespective of the political party in power. The problem is down below. That, and also the problem is that once they take a decision in a broad decision in principle, when the things go down below, again, the impediments are put on file and impediments in such a manner that you tend to put the file into orbit and you tend to put objections in a manner which cannot be reverted. And there is no application of mind thereafter. And then you end up confusing the political executive and confusing the system at large. Right. So uh, it is not a very simple problem, but with a large heart. And we do application of mind. All these things can be can be taken care of. Uh, PTSD is a major issue. But then, if you uh, the in fact that that reminds me, the paramilitary forces, uh, the Central Armed Police Forces under the Ministry of Home Affairs are doing much better better in this. They have realized the requirement of uh, counselors, uh, 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 clinical psychologists from the humanities side as opposed to psychiatrists from from the medical side. They realize the problem. They are even. You know, recruiting combatants, uh, 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 sorry, uh, counselors as combatants, uniformed combatants who can be with the troops. And uh, the matter is not so simplistic that you say that we have yoga classes or meditation classes and things will be fine. It's not so so mathematical. You find these statements time and again that we are, we are holding yoga and meditation and we are putting them at ease. It doesn't work like that. You need professional counseling. You need a relaxed mind. You uh, need good people around you. 
so that the men and women in uniform are able to perform their duties in an encumbrance free uh, manner and uh, I, I realized that the ministry of home affairs has realized this issue much better than the ministry of defense or the the defense services and i i fully praise them for it but i'm sure that the defense services would also rise to the occasion and uh, just before this chat went public we were discussing about major dp singh uh, the blade runner just now just imagine when he lost his leg and he suffered so many uh, injuries splinter injuries uh, there was nobody to counsel him he he was uh, in fact he was left for dead earlier and then one doctor by by chance has realized that you know he still has his pulse and they they revived him but when he was uh, recovering and he was uh, in the artificial limb center i think or when he was getting his artificial limbs there was no counselor to counsel him and tell him that you know you've lost your limb to put his mind at ease that is the time when you require that is also the time when you require a uh, good care of care good uh, counselors to um, you know to to relax your mind and to tell you that look here you've lost your limb doesn't matter we are here to take care of you those are the kind of basic things which are lacking in us because uh, we feel that uh, uh, lip service or just announcing something on the tv or making big statements or holding ex servicemen rallies is sufficient it's not it's not it's obviously not and the the uh, medical uh, and psychiatric and the mental care of our troops in uniform is uh, is an area where we need to work on and and uh, all of us have to put our heads put our heads together and and find out solutions rather than making uh, you know broad brush statements broad statements like that ye to civil mein bhi ho jata hai so what's the big deal no military disabilities are totally different and the way stress and strain of military service affects the mind and body is absolutely different than what you see uh, on the civil side no all i can say to uh, this is i think we have a desensitization issue i think people are desensitized to the the real pains uh, of the armed forces and i think there is a lot of illiteracy there is absolutely there is there is illiteracy i mean only an illiterate person would actually give arguments like this and you know to every illiterate person i have a very simple solution for them you know uh, i found this uh, very interesting i don't remember if it was a study or it was an article i was reading so i'm a mma fan i like mixed martial arts and what i was uh, finding was that people in the military and mixed martial arts fighters they go through a very similar mindset they they they, they have similar uh, thought processes Uh, or you know they uh, they kind of face similar injuries and and the reaction post that and etc etc mm-hmm. you know all these people are who are so desensitized i have a very simple solution please get into a cage and you know get your ass whooped once by someone and you'll realize what a military man goes through for a 15 to 20 year thing but beyond that so my next question to you would be obviously you just mentioned meeting the raksha mantri and the different raksha mantris but overall in your experience because you've been in this for years now So, what has been your experience when you have worked with the government? What, see, as an outsider who just looks at this via your articles or articles written by other people, is this is what I understand in India as far as politics is concerned. You see, politicians usually, and I have met politicians in my life too. Actually, politicians seem to be very, you know, having a lot of empathy, and they seem to be caring a lot at the, many times. But then, as you clearly said, it goes to the babu, and then you have this bureaucratic nightmare where. I have personally experienced, in my view, in India, where babus think, "Ye neta kya malum? You know, the politician is going to be there for five years. We are here forever." And sometimes I have seen babus getting uh, offended also. That you come to the neta's house every time. Why are you going to the neta's house? Why are you going to the neta's house? Why are you going to the neta's house? So, what do you think has been the role of the government in terms of the good side, and what is the bad side of the government? and this 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 basic tussle between the government's intent being right no matter which government is there in power and the bureaucrats you know basically wo jo chakki ghumate jana gol gol chakkar katwate jana how do we solve this then what do you think is a potential solution to something like this uh this is also a labyrinth and it's a it's a very complex problem uh 
individually if you if you talk of bureaucrats or the military bureaucracy or or uh, uh, you know people who are dealing with these issues individually they're not bad they they tend to be helpful but the sum of it all is that nothing moves so it's it's a very strange and a complex situation and and interestingly i have had no problem with the pol political executive i have had no problem with the higher military and higher civil bureaucracy it is uh, people we will tell me that why do you always uh, blame the lower bureaucracy but the problem is with the lower bureaucracy because the file initiators are down below there are section officer level officers uh, and even in the military there are junior officers who are who are uh, initiating files so they tend to view the world through their limited restricted world view they have no expertise in these issues they do not consult stakeholders so they'll put up an insensitive uh, highly technical note telling you how a thing cannot be done rather than showing you showing the higher bureaucracy or the political executive a way how th this thing can be done right so they're always negative on it and the thing goes up people in the uh, channel up don't have uh, time for proper application of mind and unfortunately they also do not discuss with the stakeholders they think the stakeholders are different officers in various things they just call them and they discuss and then normally the thing is it, it takes a negative shape my problem is still not with that my biggest problem is with decisions already taken by the polit political executive but not implemented by the lower bureaucracy uh now for example i was a part of uh, a committee of experts constituted on the uh, broader directions of the prime minister and uh, the direct directions of uh, uh, mr manohar parekar and uh, we had rendered about 75 recommendations out of which 32 stand accepted by the principal or accepted in, uh, accept, accepted in principle by the government of india after endorsement of the raksha mantri but till date these have not been given effect to the implementation letters have not the final implementation letters have not been issued it's all in the air so if after acceptance way back in year 2016 and now we are in 2019 practically on ground nothing has moved that should not be allowed to prevail the polit the political executive as i always say must beat the stick this this country is 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 run by a government by by the political executive we are a democracy once you've taken a decision you have to enforce that decision you have to ensure that that decision is enforced we cannot rely on on lower level uh, file initiators who put up 10 problems ke nahi ye kar denge to ye ho jayega how can that be acceptable it is it should never be accepted uh, even way back in 2014 uh, 2015 um, the defense secretary had written a letter to withdraw all litigation which stands covered by supreme court and high court decisions he had written to all even for civil uh, service matters he had he had written to all the wings of the minister of defense this is we are sitting in 2019 5 years of past not even a single case withdrawn our committee report we recommended there was a recommendation paragraph 2.4.6 saying that all settled cases all cases in which the matter is already settled by the constitutional courts must be withdrawn all appeals must be withdrawn from the supreme court it was accepted in 2016 in august we are in 2019 nothing has moved no withdrawal has taken place practically speaking now this is another area of my concern that uh, filing appeals in every damn case uh, which which uh, you know is is uh, uh, in favor of uh, military veterans or disabled soldiers or uh, uh, military widows so there was a tendency which started in 2009 2010 initially aided even by the army headquarters that they used to file an appeal in every case in the supreme court till the supreme court which was decided in favor of a defense pensioner including uh, against disabled soldiers now just imagine that the government has a battery of lawyers to represent it it doesn't matter to the government they can you know uh, spend crores and crores of rupees on litigation it doesn't matter to them it's tax payers money it's my money it's your money but when an appeal is filed in the supreme court and the supreme court issues a notice to let's say a disabled soldier uh, sitting in kerala or or in bengal or even in punjab haryana even in mumbai wo itna shock ho jata hai as soon as the notice comes to him look at the 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 effect that that for a for a small little sum of a few hundreds or a few thousand rupees you are approaching the highest court of the land 
uh, which is already overburdened with with innocuous and routine matters like these and then to expect that soldier or that widow to engage a lawyer in the supreme court and go there and and defend the case it is heartbreaking jahan tak involvement hai wo sari appeals withdraw kar do per case ek crore rupaye agar involvement hai to withdraw kar lo they withdrew i think more than 200 cases 200 appeals from from the supreme court and over here we have uh, appeals for 100 rupees a few hundred rupees a few thousand rupees against disabled soldiers which of course the raksha mantri says will be withdrawn soon and and i i really appreciate her for making uh, a positive statement to that effect but the fact remains that why should even the political executive uh, why should this be a matter taken up at the level of the political executive why were these appeals filed in the first place again it's a no brainer you you spent so much on litigation and the kind of angst and the anger which it it generates against the government against the society against the political party whichever it is in power against the entire establishment that ye dekho hamare khilaf cases file kari ja rahe hain inke paas paison ki koi kami hai 5500 rupaye 2 2000 rupaye per month ka mamla hai aur uske andar aap hamare khilaf appeal file kar rahe ho so they the the kind of chaos that it creates in the society the kind of kind of negative publicity they get the kind of money they spend on litigation itself it is much more than the issue itself and once the issue has already been settled by the supreme court or the high court or by the armed forces tribunal then upheld by the supreme court or the high court why why to continue such mindless and needless litigation that is also an area which which uh, which is mind boggling i mean you you know want to spend on expensive lawyers in the supreme court but you don't want to spend on your own women and men in uniform yeah, but i don't understand you know i salute the people of this country that after going through hell like this there are still people you know i i remember someone telling me that wo jo chalchan glacier mein jo sabse upar wali posting hoti hai us posting pe jaane ke liye indian armed forces mein waiting list hai ah uh, matlab volunteers bahut sare hain bahut sare मतलब कमाल है ऐसे ही ठुकाई होने के बाद भी इस देश का सोल्जर सबसे होपलेस जगह है जहां पे जाके उसकी पोस्टिंग होगी उसमें भी वॉलेंटरीली लाइन लगा के खड़े हुए हैं मतलब मानना पड़ेगा इस देश के सोल्जर को तो मैं तो सल्यूट मारता हूँ कि भाई तू महान है तू वाकई में महान है कि यहाँ पे ब्यूरोक्रेट तेरी ठुकाई करता है रोज मतलब क्या बेशान लोग मुझे बोलना नहीं चाहिए मगर जुतियां मारनी चाहिए ऐसे लोगों को क्या कर क्या रहे हैं ये लोग नॉट एस द आई मीन आई आई वुडंट डायरेक्टली ब्लेम द ब्यूरोक्रेट्स बट द एंटायर सोसाइटी हैज टू बी सेंसिटाइज इतना ज्यादा ये सारी चीजें मिलके इतनी ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम्स क्रिएट करती हैं एंड एंड वैसे भी यू नो एज अ सोसाइटी यू वर आस्किंग मी व्हाट व्हाट मोर कैन द सोसाइटी डू और व्हाट मोर कैन वी डू वी मस्ट रियलाइज व्हेन अ सोल्जर इज अवे फ्रॉम हिज फैमिली देयर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ problems that that you know happen back home and wo thode se time ke liye aata hai wo un problems ko resolve nahi kar pata state administration ke sath local administration ke agricultural issues issues with neighbors so as a society we must take care that, uh, that the people who are who are serving and living away from their families we must take care and ensure that though that their even regular routine problems are sorted out and resolved by us or at least their families are assisted when the breadwinner is away there's so many issues yeah so i wanted to touch upon this because uh, this i i want now this to be the final segment of our podcast because this is the most important aspect now we've uh, understood the the problems and the hurdles and the bottlenecks and believe me my blood boils as you were speaking i, I get angry but you know getting angry is never going to solve anything in life but, yeah good you got angry now god damn it do something about it i mean या आई सेड जुतियां मारनी चाहिए और जुतियां नहीं मारनी चाहिए मतलब वी वी नीड टू ट्राई एंड सॉल्व इट सो यू या मतलब पंजाबी है तो बोलना पड़ता है सो आई मीन यू यू मेड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट वी नीड टू एजुकेट द सोसाइटी अबाउट दीस प्रॉब्लम्स सो दैट द सोसाइटी आल्सो एम्पाथाइजेस नाउ नाउ आई एम गोना यूज दिस सिनेरियो व्हेन वी आई यूज दिस सिनेरियो विद यू व्हेन वी वर ऑफलाइन एंड आई वांट यू टू इलैबोरेट दिस दिस सिनेरियो दैट यू नो अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल डोंट रियलाइज दैट बाय द एज ऑफ 35 अ पर्सन इन द आर्म फोर्सेस देयर करियर इज एंडेड एंड दिस इज नॉट लाइक अ आर्म फोर्सेस पर्सन इज नॉट लाइक सम यू नो बिग स्पोर्ट्स स्टार लाइक सचिन तेंदुलकर और और अ बैडमिंटन प्लेयर और अ टेनिस प्लेयर इन इंडिया कि दे दे रिटायर एट द इन देयर मिड 30s और देयर लेट 30s एंड दे आर लाइक यू नो मिलियनियर्स इन मेनी केसेस इफ दे हैव मेड इट 
you know if you're in the armed forces you've not made nothing pretty much it's a very low paying job right it's not like a fantastic job or something that you know i'm set for life or anything of that sort so how do we go about sensitizing the civilian population the arm janta that these are problems and are there organizations in fact my question to you would be can we start donating to organizations that help soldiers maybe they are stuck with the government maybe we can help them with the legal cost help them with the medical cost if the government and the bureaucracy doesn't pay for them are there organizations like this have you been working with something like this so i would like you to elaborate on that aspect now uh it's this this issue is something which which has also bothered me at times uh there are many uh times when when certain organizations or even people or or even you know we ourselves have thought of donating amounts to people who are needy but then there's a flip side to it sometimes i feel that if the government is bound to release money to them why shouldn't we just force the government or the organization to to look after them rather than telling the civil society to to donate it's 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 the government's duty it's a it's a national duty and as per rules and regulations also the uh, the government is supposed to take care of them so why should others do it uh, that said there are organizations which have been helping a uh, which have been uh, you know giving a helping hand there are certain ex servicemen organizations uh, we have uh state uh, sending welfare offices uh, uh, welfare boards in in all states uh but again they're not very structured except for a few states um uh, to help out uh, these people in a very direct or or in a practical manner uh but there are many people uh, like uh, offline we were talking mr rajiv chandra sekhar uh, the honorable mp who has been helping out uh, such people he has a there's a there's a foundation called the flags of honor foundation which works which functions under him they have been trying to help out certain people who are living in extreme penury and uh, doing it in a totally apolitical a political manner and without uh, involving any kind of party politics or any kind of uh, uh, political inclination into this and i really respect these organizations and people like him for this uh, but uh, yes uh, uh, i i feel that uh, not just the financial aspect but in other practical aspects for example helping out the families uh, we we must stand together and do something practically for them and uh, there are certain funds maintained by by uh, the army the mod and the ministry of home affairs um, for example mr rajnath singh had also started a scheme for for uh, uh, operational casualties uh, for the central armed police forces then we have a separate fund in the ministry of defense and also certain funds in the army itself the army central welfare fund is there to uh, take care of these uh, uh, problems and people living in penury but uh, from my side i would uh, like uh, the the ministry of home affairs guidelines are very clear and even within the army i would like these funds also to be utilized for people who are uh, dis- for example disabled but not granted any pension or any disability pension till the time they get the disability pension they should be helped out by the, by by the army or by the mod by a monthly payout or there has to be some there should be some some fund uh, to help out in by giving monthly payouts to people who are in extreme penury it may not be a very huge sum but something to tide over the daily difficulties so yes i i, I think that we need to be a little more structured on these things it's all very chaotic right now um and uh, i'm i'm hoping for a better future for them all right now a couple of people in the the live chat have actually asked you questions so i'm just going to ask you those questions so someone has okay. asked can these claims be made digital to avoid human intervention do you think it's possible in a country like india which is uh, you know babudam.com totally it becomes a little difficult because uh, these claims are not supposed to be processed by the third parties themselves these claims initially at the initial stage are to be processed by the army navy air force uh, on their own level so uh, let's say for example if a person is disabled in, in on duty uh, there has to be human intervention in the sense that a medical board of course has to has to uh, examine him or her to come up with the percentage of the disability and then opine about the circumstances of the disability and and then the thing is 
after uh, human intervention and after approvals it is supposed to be processed yes at a procedural level only these can be digitized and and uh, these are digitized in 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 a manner so to say that after the human intervention and the approvals electronic pension payment orders are issued but uh, yes we can have uh, i i think if any change is to be made it, it has to be made in the sense that the requirement of uh, signing certificates or affidavits etc that needs to be that needs to go because uh, uh, these issues don't uh, these things don't help anyone not even the organization is just faltu ka paperwork uh, but human intervention would be required in in in, in these cases all right one more question someone has asked is would replacing lower level officers in idas with serving army officers help resolve the issue a little no, bit or no not at all this is a myth and an urban legend saying that uh, uh, replace the civilian bureaucracy with with uh, forgy officers and will help it is absolutely personality oriented what is lacking is empathy uh, and uh, you can't say that a civilian officer is bad and a military officer is good it can be the other way around also and we've seen it happening uh, and and in certain issues military bureaucracy is more inward looking than the civil bureaucracy we've seen it happening so this myth should be you know just kept aside and, and thrown into a well well that uh, if you replace civilian officers with military officers things will improve not at all things will improve only if there is empathy if there is sensitivity if there is knowledge if there is education and people start thinking that they're doing a public service rather than thinking that they're they are uh, resource givers or or they are the combatant authorities so, so to say so an idas is uh, is not idas the indian defense account service is not actually the executive agency to grant or or disallow these benefits it is done through delegated powers to the army headquarters the idas officers who are operating the defense accounts department are only supposed to disburse benefits yes at times even after an executive decision is taken by the relevant military or civil authority uh, there are uh, elements in defense accounts department who trouble or who create impediments and who start questioning the executive decisions but the the ids problem uh, is only to that extent it is not that they are sitting in deciding uh, deciding rules or making rules or or uh, sitting in the decision making process per se all right so one more question someone has asked they have said they have uh, asked that what has been the role of the current government in your view when it comes to uh, dealing with the army and the armed forces families and what is the exact problem right now in relation to orop so, so can you uh, shed some light on that um the current government as i as i told you that uh, uh, had constituted a committee of experts to bring down litigation and to make uh, the redressal of grievances more proactive progressive and to improve upon the entire system of redressal of grievances so um, we had as i stated in the earlier part of the program that we had rendered about 75 recommendations out of which 32 stand accepted in principle and accepted uh, fully but uh, the implementation letters have not been issued so the current uh, government or or i would say the last uh, raksha mantri and even the current raksha mantri they have been sensitive to these problems sensitive also to problems being uh, raised and projected on the social media and in the media and many issues they they have resolved which is not also to say that uh, mr antony was not uh, uh, sensitized to these problems he was also sensitized but again the problem was that the decisions or the sensitivity was not translated on ground in practical terms uh, but since we have been raising these issues since 2009 2010 in in a more forcible in a more forceful manner uh, we have been raising these issues since times immemorial but since 2008 9 10 i would say the issues of litigation have been uh, raised by us in a more forceful manner i think the fruits would uh, now start you know uh, devolving to to claimants and i'm hoping that uh, by end of this month we we are hoping that by end of this month itself some concrete steps may be taken but i'll i'll keep everyone when informed of this and as far as orop is concerned uh, the uh, payouts of the orop have been uh, i mean uh, these have been massive and there was a good jump uh, in in pensions but uh, there's a 
a dispute in the interpretation of the term of uh, terminology of OROP, uh, uh, you know, vis-a-vis -vis certain uh, ex-servicemen organizations. They also have a point, the government has a point. There was a one-man judicial committee uh, appointed to look into certain anomalies. That committee uh, had submitted its report, you know, two years back, but still those issues have not been totally ironed out. But I'm confident in the coming few months, these issues would be uh, sorted out. Some with judicial intervention, some with intervention of the government, and some by, by uh, you know, uh, sensitivity amongst the civil society. So let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful of some sort of resolution. Okay, one last question from my end. I I have to ask this, otherwise I'll not be comfortable. You, you go through this on a regular basis. I mean, I am irritated even listening to this for the last one hour. My brain has literally, you know, been electrocuted in, in some way that I'm actually finding it hard to even stay focused because I'm so irritated even listening to this. You've been dealing with this for years now. How do you stay calm? In spite of knowing the amount of rubbish that gets peddled, how do you stay calm? How, and it's obvious it affects you. I'm not denying that it has not affected you, but how do you manage it? I mean, I, I'm really amazed that how do you do it? So can you share some of that? <laughs> no, no special efforts. I mean, I, I think I am like that. And, and if I don't remain calm or if other people dealing with these issues do not remain calm, uh, then everything would go for a six. Uh, in fact, more than these issues, what affects me is the uh, extreme kind of violent behavior on Twitter as we were discussing offline. <laughs> that affects me more. Uh, it does not affect my my uh, state of mind, but uh, I, I feel a little disturbed that, I mean, this is what the society has come to, <laughs> the same thing that we were discussing. So so I, I'm, I'm okay. I, it uh, does not affect me in, in a direct manner. It may be affecting me in an indirect manner, but uh, uh, I'm I'm okay. I mean, and you also feel light, and uh, uh, you also feel uh, satisfied once these issues are resolved, whether on judicial intervention or on policy intervention, or even by educating the public. So, uh, so that I think uh, plays uh, the balancing uh, bit, and and it tends to give you more energy to to just bash on regardless. It's it's amazing actually that uh, you know it it's inspiring when I you know when I meet people like you or talk to people like you it, it's just such an inspiration that there are people in this world who are trying to do something like this you know selflessly and trying to make lives better for other people I I wish you know there are more people like you I just want to make a few last comments and uh, anybody who's going to watch this I would. I have never requested you more than for this podcast. Share this. Share this with as many people you know. Force them to watch it. Try and make them understand the problems that our armed forces face. You know, we are, especially for the folks on social media, you know, the armed forces are really loved in this country. I, I know that. I know it because even my grandfather was in the armed forces. I know there is a special love for the army in India. We know that we see it on social media. We see it outside social media also. I mean, I've seen so many occasions on the airports where, you know, you see the armed forces guys walking. Everybody steps aside. They, they let them walk through first. It's there. Don't, don't get me wrong. I know we love our armed forces. And I think uh, to some extent they do deserve that special love because they put their lives on the line for our safety so that we sleep peacefully. They stay awake. It, it's a fact. The armed forces do that. But I think these issues... To be very honest, even I was not aware about the depth of these issues. Yes, I have read articles. I have uh, you know, followed Nadeep Ji on Twitter and I've tried to understand it. But, but you do not get the depth of the subject until and unless you hear it like this. So I'm really requesting all of you that please, please share this. Please talk about this on your dining tables, on your breakfast tables, with your friends in college, with your friends at office. Let us be sensitized ourselves because what, what I have gathered from Navdeep Ji is that this is an issue of deep lack of empathy, whether it's at the end of the bureaucrat or whether it's at our end as a society too, because at the end of the day, you know, bureaucrats are not automatons. They are not androids. They are human beings. They are human beings like you and I. And I think this is in a way a cultural problem in India that we are so 
इनसेंसिटिव एट टाइम्स कि मेरा क्या जाता है मेरा क्या हो रहा है मुझे क्या करना है दिस इज अ वेरी मेजर सोसाइटल प्रॉब्लम एंड आई हैव एक्चुअली हैड अ फ्यू मैसेजेस हियर नवदीप जी वेयर लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर सेइंग दे आर थैंकिंग यू एंड आई आल्सो वांट टू थैंक यू ऑन एवरीवनस बिहाफ दैट यू नो थैंक्स अ लॉट फॉर व्हाट यू आर डूइंग इट्स रियली पीपल लाइक यू इंस्पायर मी मुझे हिम्मत बढ़ती है कि मुझे लगता नहीं यार मैं भी कुछ करूं यार ये बंदा इतना अच्छा काम कर रहा है मैं भी कुछ करूं मे बी इस सब्जेक्ट में नहीं मैं किसी और सब्जेक्ट में करूं मगर really from the bottom of my heart thanks a lot for what you're doing and any time in the future if there is any subject that needs to be brought up again my podcast is always open for you so really thanks a lot sir thank thanks a lot kushal and and thank you for choosing such a unique subject i mean these issues are not spoken about much uh, in in the media or on on the social media or uh, in uh, web broadcasts or on podcasts so i also thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing this issue to light and uh, sharing it with your viewers anything i can do for you most welcome any time all right guys uh please subscribe to the podcast if you like it be share this video wherever you can uh, whichever mode you can i'm going to download the this episode now and convert it into an audio podcast which i'll try and upload it in the next couple of hours or so so if you're not a youtube user you can always check it out on the audio podcast Till then, goodbye and good night. Take care. Thank you.